Iron Man, the American superhero who created a mechanized suit of armor to save his life and flee from his captors and later save the world. Robotics played a crucial role in bringing most of these science fiction characters to life, and Iron Man is no exception. While it's not a flying suit, Sarko's Robotics Guardian XO is the name of the futuristic exoskeleton suit that looks like something out of a science fiction flick. It is the first battery-powered industrial robot that combined human intelligence with the power and precision of robots, making it a good example of human-machine synergy. The Guardian XO is our full-bodied, powered exoskeleton suit. So that's the one that you get into, and it gives you enhanced uh, power. You can lift up to 200 pounds while wearing the suit. This makes the operator about 20x stronger. The operator feels that 100 pounds weigh like 5 pounds. The person wearing the suit can walk at about 3 miles per hour, which is an average walking pace for a human. This exoskeleton has 24 degrees of freedom or rotational joints. This lets the exoskeleton move freely and naturally in unstructured environments. The end effector design is modular and the user can select which end effector to use based on the application. It does uh, the type of work that it would be in what we call unstructured environments. Obviously there's a lot of robots and other types of lifting solutions and many of the automated solutions that are there require a lot of infrastructure to be in place to, to operate the robots. One of the unique differentiators for our robot is it allows to, um, you to do this type of work in what we call these unstructured environments. So you don't have to put in a big infrastructure for our robot to operate. What that allows for is a more agile uh, operation, a more agile workflow, and allows you to deploy these very quickly because you don't have the overhead associated with creating the infrastructure and having a large workspace for it to operate within. The power comes from three lithium ion batteries that allow for the continuous operation of the exoskeleton. The exopod docking station is where the exoskeleton can be stored and charged while not in use or if the operator needs to take a break. The other key for the Guardian XO is it's what we call autonomously powered. And what we mean by that is it's operated by battery power. It currently uses three batteries and those batteries are hot swappable. So meaning while the suit is operating or while it is on, you could change out the battery. So you don't have to do a complete power down. If you're doing some type of job, the suit will still work with one battery. So you just swap the other batteries in and you can continue to work. The batteries can charge up to 90% in about an hour and up to 100% in about two hours. So the way we view that is it allows for essentially a full work shift because all you need to do is change out the batteries and, and keep working if you were intending to use the Guardian XO for an eight hour period of time. The control system of the exoskeleton features dynamic gravity and inertia compensation that offloads 100% of the exoskeleton's weight during use. The control system detects the operator's movement through embedded sensors within milliseconds promoting responsiveness. The exoskeleton's redundant hardware and software provide passive break-in during sudden power loss. The nature of the way the suit is constructed is it carries the weight of the human operating the suit and the item that's being lifted. So all of the weight goes through the suit to the feet of the robot. The Guardian XO robot uh, is kinematically equivalent to a human. So as you operate the robot, the robot is just operating as an extension of you as a human being. 
And uh, that product is not commercially available. We started uh, some of our alpha trials right when COVID hit. So that's caused us to, you know, we had to obviously, the robots had to come home. We had to be out of facilities. And since that time, we've been doing a lot of testing at our facilities. Um, updating some of the areas in the robot. Obviously, we're still during COVID and the pandemic, um, but the plan is to release uh, the Guardian XO commercially uh, in 2023, early 2023. So we expect it to be uh, ready for trialing at the end of this year. It takes less than 30 seconds to take the suit off or put it back on if needed. So the target for commercial availability is what we call, we call that donning and doffing. So to get in or out of the robot, it's targeted to be at less than 30 seconds. And our current operator that does this, she can get in very quickly. It's, it's absolutely less than 30 seconds for her to get in and out of the suit. So everything, um, when you're looking at it here, when you look at the feed, it's similar to I don't know if you snowboard, but um, when you put your foot on a snowboard and, and flip that, that is how the feet go in. And then essentially um, at the top, she has a vest that she snaps into. So it's a very, very quick um, to get in and get out. How about different body sizes, a small person versus a very large person <laughs> right so currently our alpha units are are limited to height so you our current um, systems are five nine two six one but at commercial availability the goal is for the exoskeleton to be able to be operated by anyone that's within five feet to six foot two so very very large range the exoskeleton is IP65 rated, meaning that it can be used while raining and in outdoor environments or can be cleaned with high pressure water jets. So environmental um, considerations for both the Guardian XO and Guardian XT, uh, the target for commercial availability is they would be at a minimum what we call IP65. So that means it can go out it can work in the rain. If you needed to, you know, uh, rinse it off or something, um, you would be able to do that. What it doesn't allow for is heavy, uh, intense sprays of water into the suit. But uh, absolutely working in a rainy or damp environment, it would be capable of doing that. The applications of this robot designed to enhance worker safety and efficiency can be vast from oil and gas industries to construction to automotive to military and defense are just some of the potential applications. One interesting application is an airplane maintenance and possibly baggage handling. A couple of use cases for the Guardian XO. Uh, this is a picture of them putting into um, a landing gear. And one of the challenges when you're working around aircraft is one, there's not typically a lot of space to get heavy equipment in. And two, uh, when you're working around aircraft, uh, there's a lot of concern about damage to the aircraft. Uh, and we've been working with our partners that are in the space to understand a lot of the use cases and how we might help them solve that. Um, what we see in the airlines is uh, in what is called tech ops, so technical operations. And this is where they do a lot of the maintenance and repair work for the aircraft and even things like putting a landing gear in place um, what happens often is while you see this tool here you can have it get it started rolling um, it's hard to control it because it's heavy in itself with all of that weight and so by using something like the guardian xo you would be able to have better control Mm -hmm. of something that you're pushing into place that may weigh a lot of, you know, have a lot of weight. And one thing that people um, don't, they think that um, all warehouse and, and warehousing uh, and logistics is fully automated. And one of the things we found through a lot of uh, conversations we've had with our potential customers is that there's a lot that just cannot be automated within the logistics world, either 
because of the variety of the items being transported or, or handled or because of the different weights of the items. And there's some scenarios even such as unloading a truck where there's not an automation process that has been put in place. There's items that are called non-conveyables. Non-cons is what they actually call them, but they're non-conveyable, meaning they can't go on a conveyor belt for one reason or another. And we see uh, an opportunity for the Guardian XO in those types of scenarios where you have an unstructured and dynamic work environment where you're needing to move uh, items of various weights and sizes and dimensions and to get them into place and, and to help the humans that are, are currently doing that work that get fatigued or they're unable to lift, they have to wait. There's a product productivity impact because OSHA guidelines state that anything over 35 to 40 pounds needs to be lifted by more than one person. And so if you can imagine all the things you may get at home, certainly things I get, there's things that are <laughs> much more than that weight. And typically what happens in the logistics environment, if that type of weight um, comes about, it requires a team lift, meaning that more than um, more than one person has to go. So that means you have to call somebody else. They may be doing something else on the other side of the plant or the area and so there's um, a, a certain amount of downtime associated with accomplishing those types of tasks. The robot is offered through a robot as a service lease and can multiply an individual employee's productivity with the cost of a single employee without occupational injuries that provides a return on investment for customers. Do you remember the power loader from Aliens, which was a mechanized exoskeleton used for lifting heavy materials and objects? Sarco's Robotics Guardian GT is a human-controlled force amplifying robot that can be used for heavy lifting, welding, and other dangerous tasks and reminds us of the power loader. The Guardian GT is our much larger, um, kind of an exoskeleton robot. It's a tele-operated robot. It has very large arms. Uh, each arm can lift up to 500 pounds. And it's what we call a bespoke robot. So it would be something that we would build to order specific to a customer's requirements. Each arm features seven degrees of freedom, like the human arm, and the robot is teleoperated by a human. It can lift a payload of up to 1,000 pounds, and the robot arms act as a natural extension of the operator's arm movements. The Guardian GT, again, teleoperated up to 500 pounds with each arm, and if you have seen the video, it has a uh, three-fingered end effector that's powered that allows it to do very dexterous, uh, finite tasks, um, such as moving switches or operating off-the-shelf tools. This robot is designed to provide dexterity and power to the operator that can also have possible first responder, disaster recovery, and humanitarian applications. Christy explains the difference between this robot and the Guardian XO in terms of applications. The difference between the two are several. Uh, the Guardian GT can lift a heavier amount. So the Guardian XO lifts okay. up to 200 pounds. The Guardian GT can lift up to 1,000 pounds. The Guardian GT is teleoperated, so it's... it's, it's um, anticipated that it would be operated from a distance. And one of the applications you can think about as you think about the Guardian GT, what it'd be used for is something like nuclear decommissioning, where you really don't want somebody in that area and you need to lift and move very heavy items. And so similar to the Guardian XT, the Guardian GT is teleoperated, meaning you're you can be, depending on your communication protocol, a mile away, and you can operate the GT to do highly dexterous tasks. And it sounds like you saw some of the videos on the website 
it's a very cool machine and it's just a ton of fun, but um, it's really for these much heavier industrial environments um, and it's teleoperated similar to the Guardian XT and that's how uh, the XT came about. We had had the Guardian GT and we are working on the Guardian XO and we had people say, well, we need a, a lighter version that's teleoperated. We really just need the arms. And so we, we put together the arms for them and, and made them teleoperated. So we took a lot of our learnings from the Guardian GT mm -hmm. and the Guardian XO and applied that to the Guardian XT. Guardian XT is another robot developed by Sarco's Robotics for teleoperation of dangerous tasks, which is an arm-mounted dexterous mobile robot controlled remotely by a human using a head-mounted display featuring augmented reality. The platform can be mounted on any mobile base depending on the application and both arms can lift up to 200 pounds. The robot features 7 degrees of freedom for the arm and wrist and 2 degrees of freedom for the torso. The Guardian XT is essentially the top half of the Guardian XO and it allows again uh, the lift capability of up to 200 pounds. The difference is that the Guardian XT can be put on a myriad of bases. So our little phrase we have is any base, any place. You can put it on a lift, a scissor lift, a boom truck, or even just um, an AMR that is, is going through a factory floor. Sensuit wearable controller provides the dexterous control of the arms as well as human robot interaction. Head mounted display for the operator features augmented reality and built in head tracking. The Guardian XT, um, the operations, the controls, and you see here in the bottom of the screen of the little person, um, they're wearing what we call a sin suit. So it's a garment that they put on that has sensors that as they move, it gives direction to the robot to move. So one of the differentiators we have is we, the kinematic equivalency of our robotic systems. And what we mean by that is, as an example, where the camera is for the Guardian XT, it is essentially where your eyes would be in relationship to your shoulder. Mm -hmm. So. For a human operator, they have the sun suit on. They do have augmented reality goggles, and that's for situational awareness, so they can see where the robot is in its space. Um, and then they have hand controllers also, and the hand controllers may uh, turn on and off the tool. It may uh, control the lift. It just depends on the task at hand. The main application is for any delicate task that is difficult to reach and unsafe for human workers, such as teleoperation of tools and teleinspections. Uh, we've talked about, you know, those at height um, and overhead work. And why this is really important is falls from height are one of the leading causes of death for construction workers. So it's a really dangerous thing to be at height doing this dangerous work. And you can see some of the tasks here of people. And it's not only the at height work that is a challenge, it is the types of tools they're using. And you can see they're in these awkward positions and many of the tools are heavy. Um, or even a sander, if you're using a sander for an extended period of time, it can cause a lot of damage to a shoulder. So there's a lot of shoulder injuries in these uh, industries and there's also a lot of back injuries because it, it, it involves a lot of heavy lifting and moving of different types of equipment. Here's another example use case. It is dangerous. It's uh, we've had uh, you know lots of inquiries around here just because of the nature of the work the at height and you're dealing with high voltage power lines and obviously that could be very dangerous and create lots of challenges um, for for humans trying to do that job. The other challenge with doing this type of work is it requires a lot of ancillary team members to help do the job because they have to have not only the person that's in the bucket truck, but they have to have the person that's on the ground looking and, and making sure that they're okay. And then they typically send a couple of safety people uh, to be on site so that you typically in this type of scenario would have about four people uh, to 
perform this type of job for people with the on-site. Last but not least is the Guardian S, another awesome robot from Sarco's Robotics designed for inspection and surveillance purposes that is also commercially available. The one that's commercially available right now is the Guardian S and that's a mobile IoT inspection robot. It's a small form factor, it weighs about 17 pounds, it's about 52 inches in length, and it's able to enter uh, areas that are less than eight inches in diameter. So it can go and do inspections in, in dangerous places where humans shouldn't go or they can't possibly get into. This robot can reliably go through uneven train and reach places dangerous for humans to get and can perform visual and sensor-based inspections remotely. GPS, Inertial Measurement Unit or IMU, and six 4K 360-degree color cameras are some of the sensors embedded in this robot. A trained operator can control the Guardian S robot with a handheld operator control unit which uses Wi-Fi or optional wireless radio links. It is controlled by a human, so there's a, an operator control panel and it's similar to uh, operating with joystick so as like a gaming console is the best way to think about it and what that allows for is the operator of the Guardian S gets a, an environmental sense of where the robot is so when you're doing a visual inspection it can go into this area where the human is not capable of accessing but it gives the human operator a 360 degree view of the environment. Mm -hmm. You could also put environmental sensors on the robot. So think about biochem, if there's maybe yeah. a gaseous fumes in the area and you don't want somebody to go in until you know that it's safe. You could send the Guardian S into that type of area with a biochemical sensor of some kind and it would be able to tell you if it were indeed safe to go into that space. Sarco's robotics mission is to transform how the work gets done. Christy explains her responsibilities as Sarco's Robotics, the history of the company, along with the demand and need for its robots. My name is Christy Martindale and I'm the Chief Product and Marketing Officer for Sarco's Robotics. In that role, I oversee all of the traditional marketing, communications, um, investor relations, public relations, but um, a really a critical important part of my job is the product part. And in that role, I oversee all of the product management and we, we set the roadmap and the direction for the products um, moving forward. So that's a very exciting part of my job and one that I'm very excited to be able to share what we're working on with the, with the rest of the world. Uh, a little bit about Sarcos. We've been around for a long time. In 1983, we spun out from the University of Utah. So we've had over 30 years experience in mm -hmm. developing robotic solutions. So we've done everything from the uh, fountains at Bellagio to um, from 215 on, we've been really focused on really these full body powered exoskeletons, the XT, which is the upper half, and those augmented uh, robotic solutions for industrial applications. And one of the key tenets we believe about what we're doing is it does what we call open the aperture of the workforce, meaning it enables people that weren't able to do these heavy lifting jobs before to do the job, whether that's a, a smaller stature male, and whether it's a female, uh, the robots are really equalizing the workforce and allowing more people to either enter the workforce mm -hmm. and do these jobs that weren't able to do it before or allow the, the people that are in the jobs to do the job for a longer period of time because they're not having as much impact and fatigue to their body. Um, another thing that we think is important about, and these are specific to the Guardian XO and the Guardian XT, is there's just not enough workers. I'm sure you, in your industry, you see this all the time. You hear from companies that they just don't have enough people to do the jobs. And so that's the other thing that we think is a key value and a key tenant for what we're doing is that it helps 
um, augment the existing workforce. It allows them to do the jobs for longer as they're aging, and it lets more people enter into the workforce. We definitely want to enable the work. We want to be a, a we consider our robots being a part of the workforce, right? So, um, you know, as you're deploying the robots and, and one person is able to do the work of two or three, um, then you're deploying essentially another worker, right? And they don't... Um, they don't get sick, hopefully, <laughs> theoretically, right? They, they show up to work every day. And there's just so many applications that we see and opportunities. And you see that here on the right-hand side in terms of aerospace and automotive, logistics, um, defense, oil and gas, uh, power and utilities. I showed you a few images of that. Construction. And construction is really... A, a very uh, greenfield opportunity, and we see the XT playing a lot in the construction field. The construction um, segment has not uh, benefited from a lot of the technology evolution that's occurred over the last 10 years or so. I remember going onto one customer site and we were coming to talk about um, our robots, and his boss just told them there was somebody coming to talk to him about innovation for construction. And when we started talking, he just goes, oh, thank goodness. I'm so glad you're here to, you're not here to talk to me about an iPad application because that's typically what they, they hear about. Uh, so yeah, definitely there's industries that haven't been able to take advantage and benefit from the technology evolutions over the many, over the last few, how many years, 30 years as we've evolved, but also, um, the environments in which you're dealing with are, are not forgiving and they're very challenging environments and that they're unstructured, they're dirty, they're um, non-forgiving to the types of maybe um, rain or, or paints or things, solvents and things that are in the area. So it really um, is something that is solving a merit of problems in across many, many industries. To share the slides, there's a worker shortage and this is where we see um, the demand and the need across the various industries. We've talked about uh, people aging out. Um, so mm -hmm. as they age and they retire, there's just not enough new workers to replace them. Mm -hmm. And then we talked a lot about um, injuries. There's just so many injuries in the workforce due to uh, the type of work that is being done. And in the U.S., um, we see there's a two and a half trillion dollar negative impact on the economy just from <clears throat> either lack of workers or workers getting injured on the job. Um, we talked about the worker shortage and we talked about just um, the injuries that can be sustained just in the U.S. alone. The Spine Research Institute uh, gave a number of one hundred billion dollars spent annually on back injuries just in the U.S. Uh, so we really see that there is this opportunity to help save lives and prevent injuries in these areas that we're, we're looking to address with our Guardian XO and Guardian XT. Some of uh, our viewers are people who are recent graduates or are looking for their dream creator in robotics. So what qualifications should they have to be able to join your company? Well, we have a lot of openings right now. So first is uh, the qualification of going to the website, seeing what's there. There's tons. Um, really, we love curiosity. We love passion. I think the same thing many, many companies are looking for, just that desire and drive and excitement. Obviously, there's a lot of technical requirements. Uh, we hire a lot of mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software engineers. So we have a heavy engineering bent in the organization, but there's also business roles in finance and marketing and product management. But really what's important to a company that is um, really on the edge of innovation, it's that curiosity and drive to solve problems that people haven't solved yet. And so that that really being able to apply yourself and being passionate about what you're doing is a pretty key component to be successful in our environment. So what is your take home advice to these people? Well, of course, the typical mother, study hard, <laughs> 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 get good grades, <laughs> graduate. 
Um, but no, uh, really, and this is um, regardless of what kind of a degree you're getting, it's, it's stay on top of the industry, get to know people, reach out. I mean, there's not anybody I know that's not willing to answer a phone call or help that student and, and do informational interviews. Just if you see somebody at a conference, go to those conference, go to those educational opportunities, but also reach out and say, oh, well, I read about this or I heard about this. I'd love to learn more. Would you be open to spending 15 minutes and, and talking to me? And just keeping those lines of communication open, because even if there's something not perfect right now, you don't know if there will be in six months or so. And those internships are valuable. I know many, many uh, people that do internships and they end up at that company. It's a great way for them to see if it's the company's a fit for them mm -hmm. and if they're a fit for the company. So all of those are tools that I would certainly um, encourage people. LinkedIn obviously is a great tool. So. I don't have any more questions. If you have anything to say, feel free to say. I'm very excited about how robots are going to be used to just change the face of the work, workforce for the better and helping people do their jobs better and, and keeping them safe along the way. So we're really excited about where the industry is going and I really appreciate you taking the time to learn more about Sarcos Robotics. Thank you.